What is going on today, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I am taking a look at some of the updates to the Nero DSP Archetype Nolly, the Nolly X plugin, which just dropped uh, a day or two ago. And uh, there's been plenty of reviews and demos already online, so I wanna do something a little bit different. I'm not gonna go through all the features and updates because you've seen them a million times already because of you know release days. So what I thought I would do instead is just show you utilizing my logic template, kind of some of the sounds I would go for uh, when loading a new plugin such as this one. And actually this one is new to me because I've never owned or used the Nolly plugin previous. So this is brand new to me. I'm really excited about it. And uh, let's just jump right into Logic. I'm gonna throw it up on the screen now. And we are gonna take a look at some of the um, new features, but more importantly, how I would utilize uh, just dialing in tones for say, you know, heavy rhythm tone, uh, mid gain rhythm tones or low gain tones. Uh, clean tones, lead tones, and all that stuff. So let's just get right into it. Let's start off with the heavy rhythm tone. And I've just pulled the plugin up on the screen here now. And I'm gonna be running through my Schecter Sunset 6 Extreme here in Grey Ghost. Gonna be going straight into my um, Focusrite 2i4 and then straight into Logic Pro. I'm not adding any kind of EQ or compression or anything else, no tricks. So, you know, what I hear in the room is what you're gonna hear uh, on your end. So. Starting off with the default amp, when you first open the plugin, it sounds like this. It's a good launching off point, it's not bad, and I think that's the whole point. I think they really try to get something that's like generally acceptable to all kind of genres or all kind of people that would use these plugins. And it sounds decent, but uh, we're gonna start messing with stuff here. So first off, we gotta add an overdrive to the front of this thing to give it a little more bite, you know, a little more, um, just a better attack essentially. So let's see what we get here. <laughs> That's pretty good. Nolly does recommend using this, this new switch that's been added to the X version of the plugin. Uh, it just gives a nice push in the high end there, and I recommend it as well. He kind of says leave it as, as that you know, for default setting, and it just sounds better. I think it really does help add some clarity to your notes. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. And moving on, so I'm gonna unlink the amps to the cabs, try a different cabinet here, and then move on to the uh, cab section. So, you know, as you've probably already heard, there's four different cabinets now with different speaker combinations, which is really nice. So there's those added, you know, options. <laughs> Not bad. Let's push up the gain because I need it to clamp down a little bit more. I don't want to hear any noise in between the notes. Now, as you are also probably aware, uh, Nolly has added some of his own personalized touches to the EQ section. Generally, in most, I should say most, neural plugins, you're going to see the layout like this with these particular frequencies on every single uh, EQ section of every plugin. Um, Maybe Rubius is a little different. But Nolly has tweaked some of these frequencies, you know, to his own liking. And these, if they work better for him, why wouldn't they work for us, right? So, for instance, instead of 4K, you've got 4.5. Instead of 2K, you've got 1.5. And most of these have been, you know, adjusted similarly. Um, let's see, the high end, you've got, you've got 12K instead of 16K. I think that's much more useful. I think the 6K before... Whenever I moved it around, I hardly heard any difference really because it's so high end, you, it's almost inaudible. Um, kind of, you know, just not useful for me. On the low end of the spectrum, generally, uh, normally you have 65K. Now I bumped it up to 75K. I think that's also more useful. Um, yeah, so I do like to pull back, or, you know, do a little um, low pass here on most of my rhythm tones. <laughs> Depending on you know how bright your pickups are in your guitar, I usually set this somewhere between like 12 and like nine and a half, you know, as a general rule. But I will, you know, 
compensate accordingly, you know, for whatever your gear is. But I like to kind of cut some of that high end so it's not too shrill. But then on the other hand, I do like to boost around 4K. Well, normally I would use 4K. In this instance, I'm gonna use not only 4.5K to add a little more presence and a little more clarity to the note. And it doesn't take much, you know, for sure. <laughs> Sounds cool. And we haven't even gotten to the effects section yet, but I mean, I think it's pretty much standard fare as far as the reverb and delays goes, but this sounds great. I would definitely use this for a heavy rhythm tone. In fact, I might add just a little bit more gain from the amp. It sounds pretty good for me. Yeah, I think I would stick with that. And maybe cut the trouble just a tad. So that's pretty much my heavy rhythm tone for, from this, you know, plug-in right there. And we're good to go. <laughs> I like it. So I'm going to stick with that for my heavy rhythm tone. So we'll save it as uh, heavy rhythm. There you go. All right, next up, we're going to be looking at uh, sort of more of a mid gain or a lower gain tone that I might use somewhere in the middle section of a song or in the intro when I don't want to go full into the hardcore, you know, just quad tracked heavy stuff. So let's still start out with the default amp. If I can turn it on. All right, uh, let's try one of these cleaner amps here. One of these, something like this. So for me, I like to have a lot of bite and a lot of presence, even in the low gain tones, so that they can still kind of cut when you're, you know, palm muting and stuff like that. But um, that's kind of how I would dial in this amp. I mean, just quick and dirty. I don't take a lot of time to kind of tone tweak too much, you know, because you need to just get stuck there for an hour playing with knobs and uh, just don't need to sometimes, you're right? I mean, it just sometimes stuff just sounds good right out of the box. So why mess with it? But uh, for giggles, we'll do that. We'll do a little bit here. What you guys think i think it sounds fine <laughs> might drop a little bit of the mids here kind of do something like that <laughs> now what i usually do on lower gain tones is i like to add a little bit of air to the sound so either we can go ahead and use a little bit of reverb 
on the end here, just, you know, really low in the mix. Much lower than that, actually, let's see. All the way down, then up a little bit. Something like Or, what we can do here with this plugin, which is nice, and a couple of the other Neural DSP plugins have this too, where you can kind of add in the room a little bit. So I kind of start all the way down and just kind of pull, push it up slowly so you kind of get what you, what you like. there sounds pretty good uh, a little bit of trouble just I'm just kind of messing with the knobs here you know just kind of dial it into taste That's pretty good for a mid-gain tone because then once you double track it, for whatever reason, I noticed that when you double track stuff, it seems to take out, almost phase cancels some of the lower end so it doesn't sound as boomy or it's just as muddy. Um, I don't know why that is actually, but it does ha seem to do that to me. So I have this currently in mono. Let's go into stereo mode so we can kind of uh, simulate what it would sound like in double tracked form. Cool, that sounds nearly perfect to me. I'm happy with that. And we're gonna go ahead and just for now, we're gonna name this Mid Gain Rhythm. There we are. Uh, and that noise in the background, sorry about that, that's not the AC, that is my computer trying to take off because I've got OBS running. And OBS is a bitch. Next up, let's try some clean guitars. So kind of dialing in a clean sound. Sometimes for me, a clean tone is Sometimes my most problematic or the one that takes me the longest to do because I'm very particular in my cleans. Um, you don't want them to sound too rounded out. You don't want them to sound too hollow. There's just a lot of stuff you want to try to avoid. So right off the bat, we're starting off with the default amp again. Let's go right to the clean amp section. And of course, we're going to turn it on so we can hear it. And usually I'm using like positions four or five toward the neck for most of my clean tones, generally, not all the time, but uh... It's not bad. So we're just going to mess around with some stuff like before and just kind of come up with what we come up with. Oh yeah, and because I'm using Focusrite, for some reason I'm supposed to put this on point, oh, point 0.3 um, because it was a whole to-do about you should run your... You should be running these plugins, you know, with your gain set to zero apparently on your uh, on the input of your 
audio interface and so that's a new that's a new rage right now so <laughs> i'm doing that a uh, quick battery swap and i am back i've already tried to record this section two times and i forgot to turn obs on so there was no screen capture but uh you know if you know you know this is what I've come up with for my clean tone, and I'm utilizing uh, position four, which is, you know, four toward the neck on the guitar. Sounds nice. <laughs> So basically I've used uh, the clean amp, you know, and turned on the gain a little bit. Um, I always put compression on my clean tones so they can kind of stand out and they're not going to, you know, have some notes poke out more than others. It's kind of even, even keel as far as the note uh, volume and the gain. And uh, what else did I do? A little bit of a tweak here to the EQ section and I'm using Nolly's presets here as far as the frequencies that he prefers. I've dropped a little in the mid-range. I pushed up 1.5. I've got my high, my low pass filter here set to about 11, maybe just over. And that's pretty much it. You know, add a little bit of reverb and or delay and you're good to go. Uh, for me, clean tones is something I really strive to get to get right because you can kind of foul it up quickly. Um, I don't like a very dry, boring old school, you know, classic rock clean tone, something like that. I like something that's a little bit chimey, a little bit full, but not too warm. Um, I'm just really particular when it comes to cleans. Uh, you know, they have to stand out just right because, you know, there's usually not a lot of heavy rhythm going on with cleans at the same time, although sometimes there is, but that's more ambient stuff. Anyways, I'm rambling. This is my clean tone and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> And for me, a good clean tone you can usually, you know, use on several different positions with the selector switch. So there's the middle, that's both humbuckers and position two. And that's my clean tone. Moving on, let's go to Last but not least, my favorite, which is lead tones. But uh, here's what I came up with with this one. I'm utilizing the fourth amp, which is supposed to be the high gain lead amp sound. And uh, kind of get this. <laughs> for me and if you want to get a sense of what it would sound like in using the doubler uh, which adds that nice kind of Haas effect you know the kind of simulated qu uh, double track sound it's just more the same just everything plus <laughs> So yeah, I'm using the uh, high gain amp. I am using uh, compressor, should be on. I did not have that on. I'm using Overdrive 2, because it gives a little more oomph than the old uh, TS9 style. 
which is good for me. Pull back the treble a little bit. And then for speakers, I'm just using the stock amp and mic that's set up with it already for the fourth um, option there as far as the amps goes. Tweak the EQ, add your you know time-based effects, and we're good to go. there you have it so that's pretty much it guys I just wanted to kind of show you what I would do as far as um, you know how I would dial in some tones for you know heavy gain mid gain lead gain clean stuff um, that's pretty much it so the neural DSP update to the Nolly plugin is phenomenal now again as I said at the beginning of the video I've never used the original version of the Nolly archetype Nolly but this one sounds great. And I will say this, one little caveat I have with Neural DSP is that, you know, they tend to put um, one specific feature into each different amplifier, each plugin, that's kind of signature to that, you know, plugin alone. And of course that's a marketing technique because they want you to buy all their products. But uh, some of the stuff is really great that they've added to the platform across the board, like the doubler, like the, the live tuner, um, you know, the, uh, the detuner, stuff like that. They're kind of starting to add that into all of the plugins across the platform, and that's really great. But regardless of which plugin you get, Nero DSP does make some great products from my experience, from what, you know, I think. From what I found today, utilizing it for the first time ever uh, is a really good amplifier. If you're just going to buy one and that's it, this might be the one to consider because it pretty much does everything that I can think of uh, tonally, you know, as far as metal and rock genres goes. You know, you can kind of dial in pretty much anything you need with this thing. It just sounds great. And having all the options of the extra cabinets and the extra microphones and four different um, amplifiers as opposed to two or three from usually that what comes with the other plugins, it's just, it's a great option. So, you know, consider if you want to or not, that's up to you. And uh, if you really enjoy this guitar as much as I do, you might want to check it out. I've got a link down below to zounds.com. They've got this one in stock, and this is a beast, man. If you like Schecter's or you like the modern metal stuff, don't want to mess around with the active pickups, you like the thinner necks, check this one out. I've got a link down below. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. That's all I've got for you to, for today. I will be coming back to you with uh, some new content in the, in the coming days, probably utilizing this plugin, and I've got some great new guitars to show you guys, some new Schecter's, hint, hint. So stick around for that stuff. Make sure you subscribe if you have not already. I really appreciate it. It helps the channel out immensely. I can't tell you how much uh, it really means to me. And if you have done so already, thanks a lot. Hit the thumbs up button while you're at it. I'll talk to you guys soon. I'm out of here. See ya!